So I had the realization that I've been running this YouTube channel for over a year now and the one subject I haven't covered is being a nightclub photographer or being a dance music photographer and that's really strange because that's how I started my career. So I started off shooting in nightclubs, um, initially in Norwich and Ipswich and places like that and then eventually led into to London and working with some of like the most famous clubs in the world such as Ministry, um, Fabric, Egg, Studio 338, Printworks, so on and so forth. So um, my, my background as a photographer started off in the night scene and and it slowly developed from there and then I became a portrait photographer and then I picked up sponsors and then I moved to YouTube and um, and then focused on like the whole market inside of how I got to, to where I got to. But at its absolute core, you know, the, the start of my journey was through being um, a nightclub photographer or a dance music photographer. And what I wanted to do today is just talk about some of the kit that I would recommend you use and the kit that I take to clubs or actually I don't take to clubs anymore because I hardly really shoot clubs anymore. I still do some stuff for Mixed Mag and you know stuff that's going to go to publication but otherwise I don't really shoot in, in clubs. I do festivals and I just wanted to show you some of the kit that I take with me or I would take with me and, and the reason I take it. But before I do that I want to show you a little show reel of some of the images that I shoot and it will give you an idea of the type of photography I do because I think there's two types of event photographers or music photographers you have what's called sort of like the the table service and glamour style which is very much about capturing the people that are having a good time so they can then go off and tag themselves on social media and that's how I started and that's a very commercial way to take images in nightclubs and you can make quite a good living off it by you know you, you have to be out pretty much every night of the week to shoot it you'll find these clubs where they do table service and people get really sort of doled up to go out wear dresses and shoes and shirts and all that sort of stuff that's where you'll get that type photography over time I focus more on the artistic aspect of the energy from the parties and I focus more on the grand scale of you know the party and also sort of what was going on with the artists and the stuff that you know connects the artist to the audience uh, so my, my work sort of specialized in that so I think in terms of the kit you need I'll talk about some of this stuff here and reference it to either one of those styles and that'll give you an idea so let me show you that show of some of my images now And hopefully that will give you an idea of the type of photographer that I, you know, I started off as. So, first of all, the first bit of kit I would highly recommend you to fo focus on is a good bag. Now you spend hundreds and, and like thousands of pounds worth of camera equipment, and then you go and put it in like a free bag you get with a magazine. It's really not clever. Like my advice to you would be to get a really, really, really good bag, like a sturdy, sturdy, sturdy bag that's going to protect your gear and has enough compartments for you to put all of your stuff in as well. And one of the things I do is I have a press pass and I pop my press badge on the side of my bag. And what that does is like in terms of trying to get in and out of venues, like you're easily recognisable. People know that you're there to take pictures and therefore you can like squeeze through uh, you know sort of cues and you can wiggle your way in and out and I find that's just like a part of social compliance so if you do have a press pass or you do have a you know badges that sort of show what you do make those visible because that will speed up the process of you getting in and out of the environments that you need to shoot in and that's something that I've learned over time so a good bag I'd highly recommend also I'll show you this now Ooh. A good case so when you get to the point and you start traveling internationally a great case that will get you in and off of flights really quickly is brilliant so this is a Pele 1510 um, you can see it's got loads of stickers and my accolades sort of from previous gigs and whatnot this I can take on a plane with me which is amazing so if I'm going for like to shoot a, a one-day festival or sort of an after party or something like that I can get my clothes and my camera gear in here as one bag which is great for me because it speeds up the process of sort of like getting in and out of checking so I can take this on the plane, I can get on and off the plane, I can go straight into a taxi and go wherever I want to. So, um, And the thing with Pele as well, again, you spend all this money on your camera equipment and you know you stick it in a suitcase or something like that, you want to protect your camera gear. You know, it's probably one of the most important things you can possibly do. And on the subject of protecting, 
we're talking about being nightclub photographers and event photographers, you're going to be exposed to loud music. So one of the things I always carry with me is just disposable earplugs. Now you can go out and buy earplugs, you know, like a custom fitted and molded and stuff. I have done that before and I've lost them and, you know, lose one and stuff. So for me, I just always carry disposable ones because I know I've always got them with me. Like they're to protect your ears because you're exposed to so much loud music over a period of time, you know, later on in life, you don't want to be affected by things like tinnitus. So I would highly recommend just carrying some of these disposable you can pick them up from like builders merchants and places like that some venues will give them out free so if you are shooting in a venue that are giving them out free swipe a load of them and stick them in your bag and then that way you've got them for for future reference so highly recommend those as well and then in terms of camera kit obviously you need a camera i'm filming on my sony a7r2 at the moment but most modern cameras now which are full frame you know i would recommend you know you can easily get away with shooting in nightclub environments and that's because the ios on them you know or the ios valuing is is so sort of sensitive so they can work in low light situations but one of the best ways to get more out of your camera is looking at the type of lens you use so you have two types of lens you have a zoom lens which will say for instance go from like a 24 to a 70 um, millimeter or you can have what's called a prime lens now prime lens tends to be faster and they tend to be able to open up more in terms of being able to let light in so what you'll find is if you're shooting in a really dark environment the ability to allow more light in at a faster period of time is gonna you know brighten up your images and allow you to capture more in those dark scenarios so you can use a prime lens like this so this is a Samyang 85 millimeter 1.4 you know that is gonna super bright and I love an 85 and a 50 in club environments and the reason being is I can kind of keep myself a distance from what's going on and I can just let the artists and the crowd do what they need to do and I can just sort of pick them off almost like a bit of a sniper um, without being noticed because for me I want to pick up the energy and my presence shouldn't change what's going on because normally when people see a photographer they're like hey take my picture take my picture and that's kind of like that table service photography we spoke about earlier on where people have their pictures taken in clubs to go on social media now I started off doing that and I don't do it anymore so what I try to do is I try to make myself dis like I try to make myself blend in I always wear dark clothes I always wear a cap I always wear clothes that make me fit in, in that environment so at raves I wear black t-shirts and black clothes and I'll just blend in um, and people will hardly notice me and that's great because it means I can capture the true energy of the party and that's the type of photographer I want to be so if that's the type of photographer you want to be I would consider range and something that's going to be fast so a prime lens 35 50 50, 85 something like that's going to be absolutely perfect but if you do have a kit lens um, you know you sort of will have to work with your camera a little bit more to kind of get that light in there because they'll normally be like f3.5 or or beyond and the more you zoom in the more you lose that functionality of collecting light but if you have any questions about that pop it down below so prime lenses I'd highly recommend and then in terms of going into a club environment you have to create light, you know, because nine times out of 10, it will be really dark. And you can use the the club's lighting and with good timing, I know some phenomenal photographers that don't use flash at all. And over the time, over the years, I've become more and more skilled at not using flash by understanding the clubs that I'm working in and all the rest of it. But I do like to take flash with me just to make sure if I go into a club that's like, you know really difficult to shoot at least i can create light which is going to help me be able to um, produce the images that I, I like to produce and hopefully in the show rule you can see some of the images and you can see the the use and manipulation of light to be able to create the effects that i do so in terms of creating light you're going to need one of these guys so a speed light now this is basically light in a can so this is a speed light and what you effectively do is it mounts on top of your camera and this will create a flash in sequence with your in time with your camera basically which will create light now you can use it on top of your camera but i tend to find that sort of image is very flat in terms of you, the dimension you get from the image because you're throwing light directly at the subject now that can be great if you do things like dragging the shutter so you can basically drag the shutter take a picture move the camera slightly and what you'll do is if you then do a rear curtain sync you'll catch the motion the light will catch the motion as the subject's moving and you'll get sort of what these light like these light trails so i'll show you some of those images now on camera it's great to do that but i would personally recommend take your flash 
off camera. So in terms of being able to do that, you'll need a trigger system. So what will happen is this trigger system will mount on your camera. Then this can be placed absolutely everywhere, which in terms of like your creative freedom are oh, unbelievable. I remember the first time I ever started using uh, wireless flash and it was just like, it was unbelievable. I, I love to silhouette. And the reason I love to silhouette is I think if, you know, if you've got a superstar DJ shooting at an event, people know who a superstar DJ is, like Carl Cox, you can't, like his shape is unforgettable. You know, Dead Mouse, his shape is unforgettable. Because they've got so many adoring fans, people will know what they look like. So when you add a silhouette to that artist, like straight away it creates a level of mystery, but you still know who it is and it keeps people engaged with the image a little bit longer. So by using off-camera flash, you can do that. And you can add as many of these as you want. So if you want, you can have a three-point off-camera flash system now. The problem with that is you then need to have to do multiple setups and weave in through the crowds. It can be very difficult. So I would recommend a push maybe one or two flashes to be able to do what you need to do. And you can also add so much drama by having off camera flash. And you know, hopefully you can see from the images that I shoot by using off camera flash, I create those. So the system I'm using here is a Nissin and I'm using the Air 10 and the DI 700. Now, there are loads of different types of flash systems. The reason I use these is they're great Japanese manufacturer. I used to use Yongun and the reason I used to use those was because they're very cheap and I used to break quite a bit. Um, and if they get break, I can if they get broken, I can easily replace them, sort of thing, and then do a claim back through the insurance. Whereas some flashes, like um, the manufacturer's flashes, they're really expensive. So you break two of those a year, and you spend just as much on flash systems as you have your camera system. So, but the reason I've moved to Nissan is I just find the build quality is brilliant. Um, I'm very happy with what they do, and because I'm shooting less in that environment, I'm less prone to breakage. So off camera flash is an absolute must. And if you have any questions about shooting off a camera flash or you're scared, just ask. But one of the great things with these modern flashes now is they have what's called TTL, which is called through the lens. And that is effectively auto mode for flash. So you can go off camera flash, set it to TTL, use set the camera's perimeters, and then you start shooting. All of a sudden you're using flash. And then what you're doing with TTL is you're just going up or down in exposure. So if it's too dark, you go up. If it's too bright, you go down. And that's an easy way to fast track the learning curve of using flash, especially in a nightclub environment. So flash is highly recommend. And then when it comes to flashes, they need batteries as well. So I would highly recommend carrying as many spare batteries as you think. Now, whenever I go and shoot a gig, I will always carry uh, a set of batteries in all my flashes and then another eight. So that basically means if I'm out, I don't run out of power. And then what I'll tend to do is I'll have a smaller sort of satchel with batteries, memory cards, clamps, things like that on me. And then I'll put my main bag somewhere that's safe, like in the green room or somewhere. And it means I've got an essential sort of layout. I've got a kit that I can sort of, you know, adapt to in any situation. And if my batteries run out at a really pivotal point, I don't have to go back to my bag and get them. I can just basically change the batteries over on the spot. And I know I've got the ability to do that at least twice. So if I'm going to shoot a party that starts at 11 o'clock and finishes up like at six o'clock, imagine how many times you're potentially going to use your flash. So at least you know you're covered for battery. So I'll add some links to Amazon, to so some great places to find some rechargeable batteries. Always recommend rechargeable. They hold more power. They have a better output um, and disposables. Like if you want to be a, a nightclub photographer, if you keep buying disposable cameras, God, in like two years time, you could have used that money to buy a new camera. So um, go rechargeable, a little bit more expensive to start off with, but you can continue to reuse them. So it's a, an initial investment for long-term gain. Now, when it comes to using flash, you're obviously using a small light source. Now, that's always gonna produce a harsh light, which is great for some scenarios. But if you are doing that table service kind of photography and you need to create more of a glamorous look, you need to find a way to largen this light source to make it more flattering. So you can use things like this, and I'll add links to these. And this basically is just a, a bounce board. And what that's effectively gonna do is hit the light across here, make it hit a larger surface area, it becomes softer. Now, they're okay, I don't massively recommend them. If that's the type of photography you're gonna do, I would highly recommend something like this. Really small, so it's very easy to carry around. Pops out, goes on the flash, all of a sudden, that's the same size as my face that's gonna produce a very flattering light to people in clubs, especially if you're shooting these table service where you want people to be glamorous. Not the style of photography that I do anymore, but I did start off doing it, so I know the kit you need to be able to produce good results. So I'd highly recommend one of those, and again, I'll put a link down below so you can pick yourself up one of those guys. All flashes will tend to come with something like this. That's great, but 
it's still a small light source, okay? And that's always gonna produce harsh shadows. Now, for the type of photography I do, it's fine. I hardly use these, I just use it as it is um, because I like the um, the drama and the sharpness of the shadows it creates. Like, it's really moody, it's really punchy, and it's, it's sort of very dramatic. Whereas if I use that soft light, it would be, you know, if I'm shooting using that light and I'm shooting like a an underground techno DJ, it just, it just doesn't work. So I, you know, I avoid that. But if that's the type of photography you do, very important. Now, you've got your speed light and you've started shooting off of camera. The problem you're gonna find is using it in the club environments. So like, how do you put your flash somewhere safe where it's not gonna get nicked, or it's not gonna get smashed over, or it's not gonna vibrate out of position when you go and move and take the shot? So what I tend to do is set my flash up far away, like behind the crowd or something, move a distance away and then shoot the flash into the crowd so I can silhouette their hands and things like that. Now, if you want to do that, I initially started off with a Joby. And this is great because it bends and you know you can connect it to anything you can do whatever you want and that's you know that's great to do that but what i found with the joby is over time if you connect it to a surface where there's vibrations and let's face it in a club the music is always going to create vibrations it becomes loose um, and the problem with it becoming loose basically is it can then fall off and you know no good So I swapped the Joby. I still have the Joby because I initially bought it, but I don't use it in those scenarios anymore I use this little guy Which is called a takeaway or takeaway Sorry, and it's a clamp system and they come in all different sizes So this is the R2 they do an R1 they do an R3 you then connect your speed light to here you can clamp it anywhere. You can quickly remove the speed light. So you can leave the clamp and take the speed light off. Um, and because it's a clamp and it's metal, it's solid. So again, I'll go and set my flash up in a place where I want the light to cascade in and silhouette, you know, to create a, a, a level of mood. And then I'll go and put myself in position and take the necessary pictures. And I know this thing's gonna keep it safe. So I highly recommend this. And I personally think it's better than the Joby. Now, the Joby is great because you can put it into a tripod for tripod formation, but in terms of keeping it secure in a nightclub environment like that, I, I can't fault it. It's a brilliant bit of kit. So definitely recommend that. Then you can add one of these things. Now, not a necessity, but I would recommend it if you really want to create some impactful lighting. And I'll show you some images that I've taken using this. This is a grid. So what it's going to do is that beam of light is going to narrow it even further. So you're going to get this little beam of light. Now, imagine you take a picture of a DJ with this beam of light coming down just on his hands on the decks as he's swapping tracks. Like that creates real mood and drama to the image and has a huge amount of impact. So when you do get to the point of mastering flash and you really want to be able to you know create some very striking images you could get one of these another flash have one flash behind the DJ this flash in front of the DJ focusing on the decks and before you know it like you're shooting this really advanced like technically advanced image making use of the light that you're creating in those scenarios and that as a, as a photographer that's specialising in like the emotion and the emotive behind the dance music, that's going to create images that are going to make you stand out hugely as opposed to just these flat, you know, just flashing a light at your subject. So a grid's well worth it and, and very cheap. Now, batteries for your camera and for your flashes are absolutely essential. So I would carry as many batteries as you can. My camera has a grip system, which means I can pop two batteries in there at once, which gives me the double um, the amount of power. And then I also take an additional four batteries with me. Um, and the reason being is I just think it's always better be, to be safer than sorry, because if you have to come away from the environment you're in and you miss that moment, you cannot go back and get it. So it's always crucially important that you, you're, you've got everything you mitigate as much risk as possible and you have all the kit you need to be able to shoot in that scenario so you don't have to go back to your bag or nip out to the shop and buy batteries at four o'clock in the morning like you just don't want to be in that situation um, and that just plays a part in being professional and delivering like the best possible standard of image um, as a club photographer so batteries then i'd recommend pouches so this pouch here um, great for keeping all sorts of stuff in there now i use it for keeping my sd cards in there so you can see all my sd cards are in there and this basically carries around with me so if i run out of space on my card i can just quickly replace again without having to go back to wherever my bags kept um, the great thing that i do with sd cards that i think is very important and and this is through trial and error i only use 16 gig sd cards now the reason I only use 16 gigs is my camera shoots at 85 megabytes per image. I shoot in RAW. You know I probably get 300 images on my on an SD card 
that forces me to go and dump the images or, or take the card out and replace the card because the worst situation is if you have a massive capacity card like a 256 or 128 and you're shooting and you shoot 500, 600 odd images and something goes wrong with that card it's game over and through personal experience that's happened to me so I force my hand in terms of only able to store 300 images at a time and that means when I get to that capacity I either have to delete some images or I have to dump the card. Now what I'll tend to do is I'll tend to shoot on average maybe 200, 300 images a night, cull them down to around about 100 and then hand those 100 over or 100 plus to, to my client. And the reason I hand you know 100 or maybe less on an event is I'm focusing on the artistic side of it. Like I want 100 really good images as opposed to 300 of slightly varied images. So if I take a series of images in the same environment, I will pick the best one and that will be the one I'll go with. So using smaller SD cards like forces me to do that and that's part of my style now early on in your career you might want to be taking as many pictures as you possibly can because your skill isn't 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 that great so i would say that's fine at that point but later on you know mitigate risk and and find a way that works with your style so super vital and then the last little bit that i would highly recommend is this is a black rapid shoulder strap so this will go on here, um, connect here, and I can pop my shoulder. Now, the reason I do this is my camera is totally safe. It can't get pulled away. It can't be, you know, I can't get knocked out of my hands if I'm not carrying it. And also, when I'm moving between the crowds, I'll always lift my camera up above my head. And the reason being is because people bump, they tend to bump at hip heights, okay, and, and body height. If your camera is down in this space, it's going to get crushed and you could break the lens, you could knock off the trigger on top of the camera system, damaging the hot shoe. And these are things that I've learned through years of being a, 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 an event photographer. So I move between the crowd, lifting my camera above my head, on my strap. So even if my arm gets knocked and it falls, worst case, it's going to knock me on the side of the head. It's out of the way and it's safe. Um, and by using a strap, you know, this would do it. And there's loads of different types. I use Black Rapid because they're one of the well-known in the industry they've got a good you know they're very strong and sturdy so i can't recommend black rapid enough but you will find a cheap alternative like somewhere else if you're new to the game and you kind of want to lay out and make sure is you've got the best kit and you can't afford something like this then of course you can go and buy a, a cheaper alternative um, but this will just protect you and allow you to move easily in and out of the crowd so you'll find you have your strap a little bum bag with all your essentials and your camera and you're good to go and that's kind of like you're now out in the field you can go and do what you need to do and then when you get to a point you need to dump images or have to change stuff over then you go back to your bag and try to time that between sets and things like that so hopefully Giving you a breakdown of all those bits of gear will give you an idea of you know what kit you should use as a nightclub photographer or an event photographer. There's links to all of the stuff down below. There's also a link to my website. So if you want to look at some of my music photography, by all means have a little look and you'll get what I'm on about in terms of the style that I shoot. Um, and for me, I really want to shoot like the, the the grand scale and the emotion of the party as opposed to just taking pictures of people that go to the parties. So yeah, hopefully you found that useful. If you like the video please do give it a like. If you think the video was useful to some, and would be to somebody else, give it a share. Um, and I hope to see you soon. And if you've got any questions, pop them down below because I have been doing this for years and all the little tips and tricks that I've been talking about have come because I've fucked up like a few times. I've broken equipment. Like it's it's been a pain in the ass. So all of those are all like, again, risk mitigation because if you want to be a professional and you want to be the best that you can possibly be in your field, the best thing to do is mitigate risk. So when you do come across that scenario, you are not unhinged and you will not be affected by it and you can continue to shoot and you can continue to deliver because that's the most important thing to your, your clients is just being able to deliver the work until next time guys hope you enjoyed and i will see you all soon take care bye bye